So we got a question in the comments the other day regarding which of four Ultra Compacts to purchase, and I thought we'd make a short video in response to it, since I know from many conversations with patrons that the specific set of lifestyle factors involved are something that a lot of viewers might be able to relate to. The comments started by asking if we could do a video comparing four models, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo 2, the Epa Baby Minu V2, the Silvercross Jet 3, and the Nuna TRVL, and then went on to specify that they were looking for a lightweight, easy folding stroller for negotiating public transport, that they lived in New York City, and that they also wanted the Ultra Compact to be suitable for travel. And what I'd like to do today then, is to take these models one at a time and look at what I would pick if I had to choose between them, given the needs and lifestyle factors that the viewer has mentioned, which I feel are pretty quintessential to big city living. And then at the end, I'd like to throw in an extra pair of models that I think are also worth considering. Before I get started though, I'd like to pause and say that if after watching this video, you'd like to see more content like this, covering other models or common sets of lifestyle factors, please leave a comment. Okay then, starting off with the Yo-Yo 2, the qualities that fit well for this sort of use are its light weight and that it folds quite small, small enough to fit within the IATA's guidelines for cabin luggage when thinking about travel. Of these four models, it's also the easiest to carry, having both the longest shoulder strap as well as, at 18 centimeters, the slimmest folded profile, both of which are important factors for getting a stroller to comfortably fit under your arm when slung from the shoulder. That being said, the characteristic that doesn't fit as well with the yo-yo is the folding process, which, while not so difficult generally in my opinion, does at least take more steps than with these other models, making them a little easier to use when, for example, negotiating a rapid succession of different forms of public transport. Moving on, the Minu V2 is a little heavier than the yo-yo, as well as the rest of these models, weighing 7.7 .7 kilos versus 6.2 for all the others, and also has a folded size too large to be accepted as cabin luggage on a lot of airplanes, which knocks the travel factor a bit, though a lot of airlines will still probably let you gate check it. That 7.7 .7 kilos is fine for strolling around. In fact, if you encounter bumpier areas, the reinforcement that makes it heavier is actually a real bonus. And the weight is also not too bad on its own for carrying, though the thicker folded profile on the other hand does make it a bit uncomfortable to carry for longer periods. At the same time though, it is quicker and easier to fold than the yo-yo, so if you can put it down while riding the subway for example, then the other positive attributes of its sturdiness, decent capability for tackling broken sidewalks and gravel when you need it to, and the fact that it has a larger seat with a longer backboard, and also finally has an adjustable leg rest with this newest iteration, does give it some alternate advantages to make up for being harder to carry. The V2 version isn't available yet here in Norway, unfortunately, but we have a lot of experience with the original and plan to review it this fall as soon as it makes it here. Next up is the Jet 3, which hits the lightweight and cabin luggage travel factors, as long as you remove the bumper bar, and with this newest iteration is also a tad easier to fold since the foot pedal step has been removed. When folded, it's not quite as comfortable to carry as the yo-yo, due to having a carry handle instead of a strap, but the lighter weight and smaller folded dimensions do make it a little easier to handle than the Minu in my opinion. That being said, I would not recommend the Jet as a good model to get for these conditions, due to the fact that it's a lot weaker than both the yo-yo and the Minu, which is the result of both, all the additional hinge points needed for its horizontal contraction, as well as the use of plastic instead of metal in a number of key structural areas. The past two iterations of the Jet, which we had a chance to look at in depth, also had pretty weak locking points on the handle arms, and despite having made changes to the folding system on the rear, these points appear to be unchanged, at least judging from pictures and videos, as we have yet to see the latest version in person, and thus would likely continue to be a potential breaking point, especially if you plan to use this model as your main every day getting around the city stroller. And lastly then, is the Nuna TRVL, which also hits the lightweight and easy fold factors, despite folding down even larger than the Minu V2, thus also being a model that would probably require gate checking for travel, as well as also raising serious red flags for me, since a large size plus a suspiciously light weight generally means insufficient reinforcement in the chassis. We haven't seen the TRVL in person yet, Though, since it's finally available here in Norway, we plan on giving it a thorough review within the next couple of weeks, but we have seen the Joey Pact, which from what we can tell, is essentially the same model in a lot of ways, both brands sharing the same parent company. And from a bit of research then, in addition to suspecting that the TRVL shares the pack's too shallow and not quite upright enough seat, I believe that the chassis is also likely to share a variety of weak points with the pack that, like the Jet, will make it unsuitable for holding up to daily use over any considerable period even in the smoother environs of a city. 
Again, we'll be looking at the model in person quite soon, so the final jury is still out. But for this video, from the research I've done, let's just say that I have a lot less faith in the TRVL than the tried and tested Babies and Yo-Yo and Up a Baby Minu. Okay, before leaving you today, I wanted to mention a couple of additional models that work quite well for this sort of situation, and fall within the same price range, the Boogaboo Butterfly and the Leclerc Influencer, which are both also on the sturdier side, making them better able to handle wear from daily use in an urban setting over the long run, and which also involve only a one-step process for folding, and can also fold down to within cabin luggage limits. I'm not going to go more into the particulars of these models today, but we have full, detailed reviews of them on our channel, and links have been added in the description, along with links to previous videos related to all of the other models we've covered today as well. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.